Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this little computer, and when I say little, I mean pretty little, is the Chewy Minibook, or rather this is a prototype of the Chewy Minibook, which will be available a little bit later this year after the conclusion of a crowdfunding campaign. During that crowdfunding campaign, it sells for as little as $429 for a model similar to the one that I'm holding in my hands right now, with an Intel Celeron processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Uh, the highest priced versions have a Core M3 8100 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and 640 gigs of storage, which is actually uh, the 128 of eMMC memory, plus you'll notice here on the bottom there is an M2 slot. Uh, the highest priced versions actually have a 512 gigabyte PCIe SSD installed inside. Um, let's take a look around some of the features of this prototype. Uh, it's not quite the finished version. There's a couple of things that are going to be tweaked, but it's pretty close to what the full version is going to look like. So we've got a USB type C port for charging or data, a mini HDMI, a USB type A, and a speaker. There's stereo speakers, so one on each side. Micro SD card slot. Um, there was actually an SD card inserted here in the prototype they sent me, um, but I haven't really used it for much of anything yet. Another USB type A port and a headphone jack. Uh, so stereo speakers, fan intake, fan out. Uh, the fan is kind of audible in a quiet room, but if you're in noisier environments, I took this and used it at a, at a coffee shop, for instance, you're not going to notice it too much. It's got a sort of metal design. It's uh, not super thick. Uh, it has a, it weighs about one pound, seven ounces or so, so a little bit less than a pound and a half. And overall, it's a pretty nice little machine. Uh, I do like that it has this single screw holding the M2 slot in place, so upgrades are gonna be really pretty easy. And if you wanna see what it looks like under the hood, uh, nothing else is really gonna be as easy to upgrade, but I went ahead and took off all the screws and took some photos, and I'm gonna have those on lilliputing.com soon. When you open it up, you've got a keyboard, which is a little bit smaller than a full-size keyboard, so it's going to make typing a little bit difficult, but it is a backlit keyboard. There's a power button in the upper right corner that also has an integrated fingerprint sensor, and unlike some mini laptops that I've seen recently, there is a webcam. Now, I'm told that it needs to be tweaked a little bit for the final version because this one has a sort of greenish tint when it takes images, but it does have a webcam. So let's go ahead and power this on, and while I do that, I actually want to show you the one netbook one mix yoga or one mix three yoga right next to it this has an eight inch screen the two minute book versus an 8.4 inch screen this is full hd 1920 by 1200 versus 2560 by 1600 um this weighs about an ounce more it's about one point uh one pound eight ounces versus 1.7 or uh, one pound seven ounces and other than that though i mean they're pretty similar in terms of overall size uh, I do kind of like the layout of the keyboard a little bit better on the um, One Mix Yoga, and that's primarily because if you look in the bottom right area, there's a little bit more space and a little bit larger uh, set of keys here for punctuation marks, but otherwise they're actually pretty similar devices. I also like having a, a solid touch, uh, a space bar here instead of a broken one on this side. But overall, in terms of design, uh, they're remarkably similar devices, and one thing that I have yet to point out is that there are also both convertible tablet style devices. Uh, the difference is that the starting price for the Chewy is just uh, around 430, at least during crowdfunding. And the starting price for the One Mix 3 Yoga is 760. Now that does include a Core M3 processor even on the entry level model, but it does not include a uh, webcam. Uh, it does include, however, a pen, or at least uh, the price doesn't include the pen, but it supports a pen if you uh, pay extra for the pen. So there are a couple of key differences between these two devices. The Chewy is slightly smaller, slightly lighter, has a camera, does not support pen input, but is substantially uh, less expensive overall. It also uh, gets slightly better battery life. I've noticed that in my Netflix rundown test, I was able to get around um, four and a half hours with the screen brightness set to 50%. Uh, four and a half is not stellar, but it's among the better ones that I've tested uh, in terms of recent mini laptops. So uh, that's about four and a half. In terms of real world usage, maybe three and a half to four hours. I took it to a coffee shop to do work. I wrote a couple of articles for Lilliputing the other day and around three and a half to four hours. Uh, as I mentioned, it does have a backlit keyboard, which seems to be disabled. There we go. It's got um, 
fairly large keys. They're a little bit squishier, I think, than the ones on the on the uh, one mix, but there's not too much flex in the center of the keyboard. It feels fairly sturdy. And if we go ahead and open up a typing test, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like when you actually do some writing. Uh, another thing that I don't really love about uh, this keyboard I'll point out is the function key is to the left and sort of attached to the control key can sort of make it hard to find. We've got these really kind of small uh, sort of half width punctuation keys, half width and half height for the page up, page down, home and end keys. And a couple of things that I've noticed on, on other devices, like the tab key is above the two so that sometimes when I'm typing, I sort of hit Q because that's where I expect tab to be when I'm shooting for tab. The delete button is this sort of small button attached to the, uh, the side of the P. So what that uh, means in practice is that if I'm doing a typing test, I find that I can do alphanumeric stuff pretty quickly, pretty easily, but I tend to sort of have to look down at my fingers and uh, pause a little bit when I need to find keys that I don't use that often. So let's see what happens. All right, so 66.64 words per minute. That was kind of a long one. I had a couple of typos in there. Um, I've gotten up to maybe 80 words a minute. So typing is definitely something you can do. And the keys are a little bit larger than on something like the One Mix 1S Yoga with a seven inch keyboard. So I find that generally speaking, typing is more comfortable than I would expect it to be. But as I mentioned, there's sort of those weird quirks that, uh, that come up when you're looking for the less frequently used keys. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty impressed with this little uh, computer. The um, Celeron processor is not super fast, uh, but it is a quad core chip. So it can handle most you know, common day-to-day -day tasks. I haven't had any problems uh, using it for light work. It uh, does a respectable job with video playback. the volume, screen brightness. Uh, I should point out one thing that I find a little bit confusing is that the button on the left makes the screen brighter and the one on the right makes the screen dimmer. That's a little bit unusual, but it's, uh, you know, basically works the way you'd expect it to. Um, like most mini laptops that I've tried recently, we've got an optical touch sensor here instead of a uh, full touchpad, but the fact that you can reach up and touch the screen sort of helps make up for that. Uh, so um, let's see, what else can I do here? You know what? I actually spent some time playing Torchlight. Worked surprisingly well even without plugging in a mouse and a keyboard. So this is uh, its not a particular resource intensive game. When it comes to general PC performance, it's actually kind of on par uh, in terms of benchmarks with what you would expect from something like a dual core Celeron 
3965Y and might even come out ahead in certain respects, but uh, for some reason this isn't opening. Uh, but when it comes to graphics performance, the Cappy Lake processor in that um, one mix 1s actually comes out ahead so you can check out some benchmarks and other details at littlefeuding.com if you are so inclined now that i've got the epic games launcher loading let's see if we can get torchlight to load Out-of-the-box Linux support is actually uh, not too bad. I was able to uh, run Fedora and Ubuntu, and the touchscreen did not work in either one, but uh, most other things seemed to work, including the wireless, the screen rotation was actually correct, so uh, it's much more usable than some other mini laptops that I've tested with out-of-the-box Linux performance, which is kind of nice. So that's a little torchlight. Uh, should be able to handle some other games reasonably well. It's not really designed to be a gaming machine, but for light tasks, it's not so bad. And then if you wanted to, you could of course flip the screen around, use it for watching videos, listening to music, or even reading books at about a pound and a half. It's uh, around the same weight really as a first generation iPad. Uh, newer ones, of course, are going to be a little bit lighter, but overall, it's a pretty versatile little machine, especially if you can pick one up for as little as 430. Now, this is the lower end version, and if you do want more performance, there is a version with a Core M3 processor, costs just a little bit more, and uh, you can, of course, upgrade the memory, upgrade the storage um, when making a purchase, or you can upgrade the storage on your own. I should probably take another look at the camera here, just to point out that there is one. As I mentioned, um, my understanding is that they plan to tweak it so that the colors are a little bit better. Uh, and there might be some other changes that uh, come into play as well. The camera's over here, so if I'm looking at myself, I'm sort of off, you know, the angle's off, but at least it's not below the keyboard where you would uh, have knuckle problems that you do on some other devices. So that's a nice option to have. Uh, there's also a couple of status LEDs here above the screen where they're fairly easy to see. And... Another thing that I wanted to point out, let's see, I can probably do this real quick before video ends. Let's go ahead and plug in a USB flash drive. Now, to save us some time. So I've got Fedora 30 loaded on this flash drive. And in order to get into the boot menu, I'm just going to sort of hammer the delete key. Escape will also get you into the uh, settings here. Uh, so the screen looks a little bit squashed. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but if you go ahead and look through the options that you have, you can adjust your secure boot settings. You can adjust your boot order. There's also an option here to change the screen rotation policy. Uh, so it's right, normal, or left, or reversion. As far as I can tell, this only affects the boot screen and tells you whether it's going to say Chewy this way or this way, um, but it is an interesting option that's in here. You can also uh, enable or disable quiet boot or change your boot priority order or override your boot uh, priority. So in this case, I'm just going to tell it to boot from the flash drive and load the operating system from the flash drive. Another thing that sets this apart from the one mix, at least on the prototype that I'm testing, I've noticed is that the hinge is a little bit less stiff. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a big problem. It doesn't really wobble too much as you type, but 
it's, it's a little less stiff for whatever that's worth. Oh, and I also wanted to show you, because it's going to take a second for this to load, that uh, this is the charger that the version I have came with. Uh, it's just a USB Type-C power adapter. Uh, this is a 12 volt, 2000 mAh. Um, yeah, it's not a fast charger. I'm not entirely sure how well you can see this here. Let's see if I can focus. There we go. Uh, but there is an option in the crowdfunding campaign for the higher price version if you wanted to opt for fast charging. Uh, that does seem to be an option now. So let's go ahead and say we're going to try Fedora without installing. And again, the screen resolution seems fine. Wireless works. I'm able to connect to the internet. The touchpad works. Let's just go ahead and type in my password. The only thing that doesn't seem to work is the touch screen, which isn't a huge problem if you were just primarily hoping to use this as a laptop. But if you wanted to switch it over into um, tablet mode, not having a working touch screen is a little bit problematic. Uh, screen brightness, volume, everything pretty much works the way that it should, including the speakers. And let's see if the camera works. The camera works as well. Although the frame rates seem a little bit lower here than they did in Windows. And I can't scroll. So that's a quick look at Fedora. Uh, Ubuntu works similarly. Uh, the difference there is that the screen resolution out of the box is not set properly. And if you try to adjust the screen resolution, often what will happen is uh, it won't give you the option because it basically thinks that this is set at 1200 by 1920 instead of being set to 1920 by 1200. And so there's no other aspect ratios that will work properly. So if you wanted to adjust it, you'd wind up with something that looks probably like this, which is not what we're looking for. So the out of the box experience is actually pretty good, but adjusting it beyond that would probably take a little bit more knowledge than I have. So that's a quick look at Linux gaming, web browsing, typing on the uh, Chewy Minibook prototype that was uh, sent to me by the folks at Chewy for testing. Uh, similar, but not quite, uh, similar to the final hardware, but not quite finalized. Uh, but overall, it's, uh, it's not bad, especially considering it's one of the more affordable options. Uh, during crowdfunding, it's actually sort of on par with the 7-inch One Mix uh, 1S Yoga. Even though it's got a larger screen, it's got a camera, uh, it lacks pen support, and uh, it's, you know, overall decent performance as long as you're not looking for bleeding edge graphics performance. So you can find more details at lilliputing.com or uh, check out some links in the uh, description for this YouTube video. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and uh, the not quite pocket sized Chewy mini book um, compared with the kind of pocket sized seven inch model, the One Mix Yoga and the one mix three yoga, which is just a tad bigger than the Chewy mini book.